Quick announcement before we begin, my newest novel, Ashes of Onyx, is available now as a pre-order at Amazon.com. Release date is set for January 28th, and at that time there will be physical books and audiobooks available as well. But for anyone that's wanting to pick up an ebook of my newest novel, you can go ahead and pre-order that now. Links below. Publishers Weekly has already given it its first review, and they gave it a huge thumbs up. So I am really looking forward to people getting to see what I've been working on for this long. But anyway, that is it. Quick announcement. Now on with the video. Hello Internet, says Skorakowski. I haven't done one of my tabletop war stories in a while, so I figured it's time to do another one. Now this is one that I'm titling, Have You Met Fred? As game masters, we like to create layered plots, where the player characters have to ask around and figure out exactly who their enemies are. Or at least, I like to do layered plots where they have to figure out who their enemies are. Now my players enjoy that, but sometimes they get so caught up in the excitement of role-playing or the excitement of being such great badass characters that they are, that they can have a tendency to occasionally forget entirely what the plot of the game is, and then that comes back and bites them in the ass. This is one of those stories. Back in 2013, we were playing a fantasy game. It wasn't D&D, it was a homegrown system that no one else has ever heard of before, but for the purpose of this story, just go ahead and imagine it like we were playing D&D. For this adventure, I had stolen several elements from the adventures against the cult of the reptile god in the village of Hamlet. The player characters had arrived in a small, crappy town because an old friend of theirs had been gruesomely murdered. Asking around, they discovered several pieces of information. Once, centuries ago, a dark cult had operated here and then been wiped out. In the countryside around town, there are still five stone pillars where this cult performed their dark rites, sacrificing victims to their dark and sinister god. Their main temple was hidden somewhere in the low mountains to the south, its location long forgotten. But most importantly, not only is this cult resurfacing, but several townspeople are secretly involved, and anyone could be an enemy. Their friend's body was discovered bled out and sacrificed at one of these pillars, and by asking around town, they discovered where one more of these pillars was located, so they decided to go and check them out. Going to the first, they searched around, but didn't find anything there, so they headed to the second pillar, where another body had been discovered a few days prior, and there they noticed some tiny holes that were in the altar slab that fed blood down below to some sort of secret area beneath. With that clue, they discovered the secret door that took them down below the altar. Below is a gruesome scene. A flayed human was suspended above a bowl by gold chains. The sacrificial blood ran down his body and gathered in the bowl below. A gold ring was set in the victim's sternum, and through it they could see a glowing heart inside his chest cavity. Also, the victim was still alive, and there was also something down here with it. Now, this whole thing was a way that the cult was gathering a lot of power. So with these flayed victims that were underneath the altars, the hearts were gaining all the power from all the sacrifices done above it. And then once they were going to be charged up fully, the cult was then going to take these five flayed people up to their secret temple. They were going to sacrifice them, and with the combined power of all the energy and all of them, that was then going to resurrect their dark and sinister god. But the hidden room under each pillar also had a guardian. For these, I found an old grenadier miniature on eBay. I don't even know what the hell this thing is, but it was weird and alien and perfect for us to use. The player characters battled this guardian in this huge fight, eventually killing it. They pulled the flayed victim out and put him out of his misery, and then they gathered up all the gold that they had found below. Now I had assumed that the player characters would then go back to the first pillar. Now that they knew where the secret door was, they would open up the secret door there, go down, fight the monster, uh, destroy this victim with their glowing heart, and then they would go around, they'd find the three other pillars that were around the town, open those up, and destroy all the monsters and all the victims and all of those. The game masters should never assume what your player characters are going to do, because instead of any of that stuff, my players said, We have defeated the monster and saved the town. The cult's god is dead. Now let's get back there and celebrate. Yeah, they're gonna love us for saving them. So, the player characters threw the dead monster on the back of a wagon, they threw a tarp over it so nothing could eat it because they're planning on having the thing stuffed later on, and they headed back to town like big damn heroes. They chose the biggest of two inns in town, and they proceeded to throw this huge party. Everyone in town was invited to this party, and all the gold that they had found is what was funding the whole thing. So, the whole town shows up to this big shindig, and the player characters are telling the story of their bravery and how they destroyed this evil monster that was below, and how they had saved everybody in this town as they proceeded to get blind stinking drunk. One of them got so caught up in the mood that he called the tavern keeper over and asked him what his name was. He said his name was Stephen. Okay, so I'm going to tell him to come outside with me and take him to the cart, and then I'm going to ask Stephen 
Hey, have you met Fred? He says he hasn't. Then I'm going to whip the tarp aside and pull that monster up and go, Hello, Steven. My name is Fred. Will you be my special friend? All the players were laughing and laughing. They loved this whole gag. But you know who wasn't laughing at this? The bartender. Because the bartender was a cultist. In fact, I decided that he had raised that particular creature from when it was a hatchling, and he was absolutely horrified at what he was watching. So I had him roll to see if it could keep his cool here, or just freak out and attack the player character for murdering his cherished pet. Pet. He made the roll and he was all like, yeah, that was really funny. I tell you what, I'm going to comp your rooms for tonight and you guys can have the best rooms that I have. Ha oh, ha, sweet. Then I'm going to go back inside and get myself some winches. Too late, unless you want floppy seconds. I think you mean sloppy thirds. The heroes party. They told the Fred story to everybody that was in the tavern multiple times, completely forgetting the part where there's murdering cultists that are still in this town. So later that night, once they were all in bed, secret doors opened in their free rooms, and the tavern keeper and some of his cronies came in, attempting to capture them. I had figured this would be a good fight. You know, not really successful, because the tavern keeper was a lot weaker than they were, but the player characters went down surprisingly quick. All of them were captured and thrown in a cell that was in the tavern cellar. The tavern keeper and several masked people taunted the PCs, telling them how they hadn't succeeded at all, and now the blood of their own sacrifice would be used to undo the setback that they had caused. And the player character who had taunted them with this Fred thing was going to be the flayed victim who was going to suffer the most and be sacrificed last. Guys, this town is full of cultists! Yeah, I forgot about that. We also never checked out those other pillars. Ha <laughs> ha, whoops. Now the player characters eventually escaped from that. They killed the bad guys, they killed the monsters, and eventually they destroyed this entire cult. But it was a lot harder for them to do than it was originally supposed to be because they had tipped their hand. They had told the cult that they were in town and what they were up to. And now the player characters couldn't return to town until after the cult had been wiped out. For me, the Fred story, which the players still laugh about today, complete with a little puppet hand motion, it really illustrates how game masters don't always need a come up with some sort of super powerful NPC villain for the PCs to fight. Player characters can really be their own worst enemies. And unlike that badass NPC villain that the Game Master has made that they can control and they know what the NPC is going to do and when they're going to do it, a Game Master has no clue and no control when the player characters might just sabotage themselves in exchange for a laugh. Hey! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up! If you want to see some more of our stuff, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos, stay awesome. I love you, Fred. I love you too, Todd. You're my best friend.